Oh, welcome back to Behind Grand Rapids, Michigan, a podcast where I investigate the most infamous street killing in the history of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, And you can help me by Googling Jamie Loftus, comma, Hammer Murders, comma, Michigan, comma, CIA, comma, Bill Clinton. No, comma. I'm taking this. I'm taking this all the way to the fucking top, and I'm saying that you're trying to associate me with Grand Rapids so that you can continue to pass yourself off as a Bostonian because mm-hmm. I am the big knot in your Bostonian hoax. Yeah, you're the only one who can expose me to the world. Yeah, and so they're trying to t- <laughs> listeners. They're trying to take me out because I have the truth. I'm a little too close to the truth, one could say. Mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. people are going to make accusations. And yes, it's going to involve hammers. And yeah, it's all going to sort of sound plausible for some reason based on my general vibe. But I assure you, I've never even been to Grand Rapids. I went to Detroit for hot dog purposes only. Now, thank you, Jamie. Here's my what? question. Here's uh-huh. my question. And this is mm-hmm. this is an important one. Um, yeah. Why are you more concerned with being associated with Grand Rapids, Michigan, than Bill Clinton? Fame the- sex criminal. I die. <laughs> what? I'm just saying look, that's what you expressed I, was your issue, not the Bill Clinton of it all. So, it does, look, I, I'm sus. always what am I not talking about the Bill Clinton of it all? And maybe that's a good let's let's change the subject to the Bill Clinton of it all. I'd love to talk about the Bill Clinton of it at all and not the Jamie of it all, because the Jamie of it all, you know, long story short, it, it, uh, it, it it's giving innocent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's giving I didn't do it and I couldn't have done it because I was I was just a kid. Yeah. And you, you, so you, were I to be prosecuted, you know, it, I, it, it, you couldn't as an ad- Adult, right? Wait, is that a thing? If I committed a crime when I was a kid and I'm caught as an adult, how? What happens? Oh, I think you're. I think you're free and clear, which is why everyone listening, if you are under sixteen, go go commit a murder. It's fine. Okay. You will not get in trouble. Okay. Anyway, well, I, I just to be because I don't because the, this does feel like a trap. I still admit to nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. I admit to trying to get a bunch of sixteen-year-olds to not lose out on their one chance to commit a murder free of consequences. Wow. And by free of consequences, I mean you might be arrested and put in juvie for several years, but you're not going to spend the rest of your life in prison if you're under 16. So go out there, kids, you know? Look, there's a lot of oil executives out there. That's all I'm saying, you know? Um I- what are we to I and we're about to talk about the CIA for another one thousand. We sure minutes. are. How? <laughs> no, we we Why moved past the this? CIA pretty quick. Um, <laughs> Why does he do this? It's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make the world a better place, or at least a place with slightly more interesting headlines, which well, is Robert, the same you make as the better. better yeah. We're a better place just by being in it. But okay. Oh wow! Thank you for that oh, lie, Sophie. I know. Gotta, um, gotta lie to you at least once a week. <laughs> Robert's yeah, literally yeah. Venmoing Sophie as we speak. That was every, so, every oh, time she every oh, time wow. Sophie says $12, something nice. Twelve thousand dollars for one oh, lie. Holy wow. Shit. Yeah, I'm insecure today. So <laughs> today, um, back to ooh. the <laughs> fine. Yep. So. In an article written by the Washington City Paper uh, in 1996, a journalist interviewed Toby Terrell. Now, this is the same guy, Robert Terrell, Toby's his cult name. I never really found a great explanation as to why. This is the uh, dude who's the IRS agent. Name. If yeah, you're going to do it, a cult name, do a cult Toby. name. Come on. That sounds like those sodas with the weird geckos drawn on them that we drank in middle school. That's Come my on. neighbor's dog's name. Yeah. Try harder. So so Toby Terrell is the former IRS agent who worked for the company trading those CIA agents who also later, spoilers, is going to sue Petty and the cult and then write a biography of Petty after he dies. So this guy, number one, kind of sus. Uh, number two, yeah. absolutely involved in every weird, sketchy thing around this cult. Um In 1996, he has left. He's suing the cult for reasons that we will get into later. And the journalist talking to him asks him, hey, was there any weird sex stuff with your cult, right? 
Like, I know you guys got, you know, declared innocent or whatever. They dropped the charges, but everyone still suspects that you were doing something with those kids. Was there any weird sex stuff going on? And Terrell's answer, it, he 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 definitely doesn't claim that they did any weird sex stuff with kids, but he does not deny that they did weird sex stuff. He kind of does the opposite of denying it, right? Are we talking uh, like weird illegal sex stuff or just no, weird sex stuff? Okay, I think just well. weird. So here's what he says. If you want to write a scholarly piece about the group and the historical context of the Shakers and the Oneida communities, fine. But for a newspaper article, I don't want to get into that. That's sensationalism. So he's basically saying, yeah, we were a weird utopian cult. And like all weird utopian cults, we did some crazy sex shit. But I'm not going to, I don't want it to be in a news article because you're just going to make it into something it's not. If you're like a scholar and you want to talk about our weird sex shit in the scholarly context, that's fine. But otherwise, no. Um, yeah. What okay. an interesting that's an interesting stance to have. I, I don't I actually think that's a fair stance to have where he's like, look, yeah, every cult does weird sex shit. We're like a weird utopian community. But, but I if don't you're wanna, not if you're yeah. not writing a scholarly essay on it, yeah. I choose not to comment. If you want to put us in context, sure. If you just want to be like they were doing weird sex shit for your news article, I don't want to be part of the sensationalism. I actually kind of respect that, even though this guy may, in fact, have been doing some shady spy shit we really don't know right right you're like it's still ultimately bad but i see you know i I see where he i like unfortunately you know bad people make good points yeah that's a respectable answer to the question is what i think so the idea of the cia using a cult to spy on or otherwise disrupt left-wing activism is not far-fetched because we know for a fact that versions of this happened back during our episodes on mk ultra i quoted several times from the book chaos by tom o'neill which provides a detailed look at a number of very weird cia connections around charles manson and there's debate you know, it's possible he was, in fact, very likely that he received, was dosed with acid as a result of MK Ultra. Very good chance he received some money. There's some, like, court things where he got in trouble and then it went away. It's all very unclear exactly what his relationship was, but the CIA was involved in kind of the fringe radical left community around the time of the Manson killings. And there's right. some suspicion that, like, basically they were hoping that they something like what happened with Manson would happen and it would discredit the anti-war movement, right? Um, okay. That is a, again, tracing out exactly what happened is is really hard. And I think there's a good chance the CIA didn't, was just kind of vaguely hoping that by encouraging some shady figures, you know, something would go down rather than plotting out every step of it. But like some right. weird shit went down with them there. And okay. we know for a fact that there were multiple cases in this period of time of people with intelligence connections intervening before the murders to help out Manson get him out of legal jams. The CIA was undeniably in engaged in something called Operation Chaos, from where Tom O'Neill's book takes its title. This was the CIA's counterpart to um, um, COINTELPRO, right? So the Mm -hmm. the FBI is COINTELPRO, where we're infiltrating these groups and we're trying to make them not trust each other, trying to convince everyone on the left that everyone else on the left is a federal agent, right? Like that was was COINTELPRO in a nutshell. There was more to it than that. The CIA's counter to that was this plan to disrupt the left in the United United States um, by kind of sowing chaos and discord. And I'm going to quote from the New York Times here. The CIA had undercover contacts monitor the meetings of groups, such as the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and the Washington Urban League, and maintained files on nearly a thousand organizations. By August 1973, when CIA Director Colby virtually halted this project, the paper trail left by Operation Chaos included somewhere in the area of 13,000 files on subjects and individuals, the report discloses. Linked to this was a computer system containing an index of over 300,000 names and organizations, almost all of them United States citizens and organizations unconnected with espionage. Mr. Helms and the high officials of the Johnson and Nixon administrations with whom he dealt were well aware of the fact that they were breaking the law. Thus, in submitting to Henry Kissinger a report on restless youth, Mr. Helms wrote in a covering memorandum early in 1969 that a section on American students was extremely sensitive because the whole area was outside of the agency's charter. Mm -hmm. So first off, the CIA is a foreign intelligence like their purview is foreign intelligence. They are not right. allowed to act 
like to to spy on Americans. They are not allowed. To, that's not what. Now they did a lot of it. But I, that was was like, I was like, no, they let's not say it, they did it. But do they're it. not but allowed to. On yeah. paper, they are yeah. not supposed to. Yeah, they are. They are for overseas. The FBI is for domestic. Right. It's so funny how easy it is to forget that just based on like yeah, shit their that whole they history respectively yes. did. Yeah. OK. Yes. Yeah. I'm not saying that to say like the CIA wouldn't have done that. No, they absolutely did it. It was just illegal. But the other thing that I think that quote should make clear is that like there's absolutely a place for find the finders in Operation Chaos, right? They're spying on all sorts of weird groups. They're reaching out with weird questions to progressive groups. They know computers. They're maintaining massive computer databases. Like, all of this is shit they could have been involved in, right? Like, this is, Operation Chaos is, like, tailor-made for these guys. Mm -hmm. And we know that Operation Chaos extended through to 1974, and the finders started in 1971. We know that the CIA was aware of of Marion Petty, at least in 1969, when he started traveling to communist countries. So mm -hmm. there's at least a three year, at least a three year period where there's a non zero chance where not only is there a decent chance that the CIA was interested in what the finders could bring them, but we know the finders were doing the kind of shit that the CIA was doing, right? Keeping mm -hmm. these notes and building extensive databases on left wing domestic organizations, right? So, yeah. you know, not impossible. Also, no real evidence other than like the what we have sort of asserted, right? So like no right. clear evidence as to exactly what they would have been doing. But it's it's not at all impossible or unlikely that there was something going on. Right. God. OK. Yeah. It's, so that's uh, fun. Yeah. So that's fun. It's it, it's so fun. it's like this problem is consistent throughout this organization's mm -hmm. entire history. But it just yeah, it continues to get more and more tangle this time goes on so yeah. what year are we in at this point well we've kind of jumped around a little bit just because like there was the thing that happened in 87 where like the cia took those training courses with the uh the the computer company that was tied to the founders um that happened before they were all arrested uh mm -hmm. but it didn't break until 93 but yeah we still have not resolved the court case and i i do i don't know how to not jump around at this point because it's it's so labyrinthine and like the dates at which different things were found out. I hope this has not been unclear to people. It's just such an odd story. I wasn't really sure how yeah. else to structure it. I trust you. Yeah. One of the first men to study the finders and to comb their story for evidence of spy shit was a guy named Wendell Minnick. Uh, Minnick was the author of an encyclopedia of espionage called Spies and Provocateurs. He spent two years digging into Petty, I think in the late 80s, uh, mm -hmm. and his cult, and he wound up abandoning his research after, and this really dates his research, after he spent $1,000 in phone calls. Um, <laughs> Who you can do that us? back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Who among us? And he was like, I spent God. all this money like tracking down leads and trying to figure out shit about them, and I found nothing. Um, I'm in the doghouse. I sent too many texts, <laughs> too and many now my family is getting evicted. <laughs> yeah. Long distance calls used to be a thing, people. Yeah. Um, he later told a reporter, the finders would love you to think they're a CIA front, but I would say they're really nothing. You're going to hear a lot of bullshit on the finders because they lie. These are dysfunctional adults, but they're all working their asses off. They're constantly working on some project. If you have a cult, the best way to control people is to keep them busy, to keep their minds occupied. If you have people standing around doing nothing, then they start thinking. So that's Minnick's attitude is that like these people desperately want you to think they're a CIA front, but like most of why we have all this information that kind of seems like they might be spies is because they desperately want people to believe that because that makes it a lot cooler than that. They're a bunch of weird adults LARPing some guy's game. Yeah. Are, are you how are you inclined to feel about that? Because I just like I, I understand why that's plausible, but there's so much other there's, I close I, connections to the CIA. Like I suspect petty wanted to be a spy, maybe he was a little jealous of his wife, wanted to be involved, and started, when he started doing this, reaching out to them with information. And I think there's a pretty good chance someone at the agency may have strung him along to see if he had anything in useful. And I kind of doubt he gave them much, because I don't think these people were super serious. Um, but that's my suspicion is that there was some level of connection between them um, but that it was still mostly petty wanting to feel important. 
right? Rather yeah. than like them giving use, because there's no, here's the thing, there's absolutely no information or allegations of like, this group of left-wing activists was arrested because of info that the finders gave, right? We don't, right. we've heard nothing, there have been no allegations. And I kind of think by this point, there would be something specific as to like, here is what they did for the CIA. And it's mm -hmm. all these kind of like vague insinuations and like, loose weird connections that make me think yeah he might he may have been trying to give them info and he may have just not had that much of use um but i don't know uh God. we and we probably never will at this point no um, but there yeah. is there is just like something so profoundly tragic about a larper who who can't even like become vaguely interesting to the cia yeah because he's jealous of his like he's like i want to do my, crimes like my ex-wife yeah i want to do just, crimes against humanity like she did come well, on girls get everything the because obviously the fbi comes out and says like we don't believe these guys were involved with the cia in any meaningful capacity right that's that's and we don't believe they were sex trafficking kids and the conspiracy theorists will say well of course the fbi would say that they're the fbi they exist to cover up government crimes but right. those people the source that they cite is ramon martinez who's also a fed so like either way right. on this, you're trusting one federal agent or another, you know, um, which is never a situation you want to be in if you're trying to track yeah. down the truth about like a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's also worth noting that Ramon Martinez and I, I found this, the QAnon Anonymous guys did an episode on on okay. the finders and they found references to Martinez by some like there, there's at least one prominent conspiracy theorist, the guy who's kind of the origin of the black helicopter like family of conspiracy theories who uh is like yeah this guy was like a friend and he was he was a cool dude and we like chatted a bunch basically like this guy martinez who came up with all these allegations against the finders that no one else ever verified was a lifelong conspiracy theorist and that may have explained no it. shit yeah that's also it's like there there is such a you know it's like it's not as if there isn't some rich crossover between federal agencies and conspiracy theorists so no such a such a rich gradient we're exploring no. the fbi we know uh, as part of j edgar hoover's like COINTEL pro was like yeah we're going to try and incite conspiracy theories the right. more conspiratorial we can make the left the less they'll trust each other and the more they'll fight rather than like engage in organized action against the government so mm -hmm. it's also i guess the other possibility is that the finders were never working for the cia in a meaningful capacity but the cia may have wanted them to think that because they wanted something like this to happen right for them to become the nexus of a conspiracy theory also a conspiracy that's totally possible and within the cia's wheelhouse um right. so i don't know <laughs> at the end of the day jamie i don't know exactly what was going on with these people but i do know that all charges against the two finders members who were arrested and charged with child abuse were mm -hmm. dropped after six weeks um okay. and the children were all ultimately returned to their mothers and you know okay. what else was returned to its mothers no this i hate i hate this transition well jamie what? i love this transition just like just like the mothers of those kids loved their children. All right. More so. More so. Even more so. But not as much as you love these products and services. No, no one has ever loved their children as much as I love the products and services <laughs> that support this podcast. That's just a fact, Jamie. It's sad, but it's true. No I really one hope the that. next ad is like dick pills. Yeah. Something. Yeah, absolutely. Way better than a kid. Anyway. <laughs> And we're back. Boy, if there is a dick pill ad after that, that's really going to get the whole child molestation conspiracy theory people talking. I, okay, I have a question. Mm. Yes, Jamie. Have any of these kids since spoken on this nope. period in their lives? Not that I have found. None of these, again, it would be a, it would be pretty damning if some of them had come forward and said, yeah, we were absolutely molested, but doesn't appear to have happened. But Which there's part just of why, like nothing interesting. Yeah, that's part of why I suspect the FBI is probably correct in its conclusion that no kids were molested because like sure. at this point, something probably would like Petty's dead, the cult's gone, something probably would have come adults out. Now. Yeah. yeah. But 
nothing has. And there's just, again, there were never, the kids never claimed anything had happened. This isn't even like, you get some of these satanic panic cases where like these kids become convinced that they were part of some like, yeah. yeah. There's not even that, right? The kids are never, like the most they have is that like one of the little girls, when they ask her if she was molested, gets uncomfortable, which like, well, yeah, if some strange adult cop starts asking you if someone touched you, that's pretty awkward. (laughs) <laughs> like, yeah, I, it's not evidence that she was molested, that she was not comfortable in that situation. Um, <sighs> yeah, that's not a comfortable situation. Uh, no. Yeah. So I, I I don't the CIA again, where I where I land is like the CIA stuff. Big fat. Maybe there's like six different possibilities that you cannot rule out as to what may have happened there. Mm. The sex trafficking children, Satanist thing. No evidence whatsoever. Right. And his, yeah. and like historically, yeah. those allegations in this era, like mm-hmm. it doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't. <laughs> that's, that's where I land on this stuff. Okay. Now, I should also, again, some of the blame for lingering conspiracy theories about the finders as agents of the CIA or some other right. spy it's like, agency. It, I, it doesn't absolve, like it is ultimately, well, I fully also- believe that it's. Probably uh, their fault that this is, has stuck for so long. But yeah, it is, it it's absolutely is because like they he likes he he deliberately has his people go out and incite some of these rumors like while the case is still going on just to like add to the media circus possibly because he liked seeing his name in the paper. I don't fully know. Mm-hmm. John Cohen's article on the finders was published a year or so after the court case ended. Right, so this is the first good piece of media we get on it because there's this whole all blows up everybody's talking on the news Connie Chung's talking about satanic child molestation cults and then nothing happens the case gets dismissed and so Cohen does an actual good piece of journalism trying to figure out what happens and he's the first person to interview one of the mothers uh Paula Erico about like what happened and she tells him like yeah we all left the cult all of the women with kids left the cult after this because we were pissed at Petty for how he handled it quote Paula Erico nearly spits up her food laughing when I tell her people suggest the finders may be spooks. Erico and I are sitting at a restaurant in Tallahassee. She resettled here after the juvenile court finally deemed her fit to raise Mary and John Paul. Those are her kids. That's Mm -hmm. their model, to pretend they're CIA, says Erico, who was in the group for eight years and now works as a bookkeeper. Who would, wouldn't it be an exciting life? And again, this is like one of the moms at the center of it, who's like, presumably would have reason to like be angry at them or uh, go out of her way if like something shady had been happening. Who was like, no, they were assholes playing a stupid game with my kids. And by the way, that's plenty to qualify them as bastards. That's a bad thing to do. Absolutely. I know. I, yeah. I, and also just like being, uh, you never know what, what, what past lives your bookkeeper yeah, uh, has has been up yeah. to who knows? They're like, you know, yeah, was I in a LARPing cult? Yes, yeah. but once a they started to fuck cult. with my kids, I had to walk. Yeah, yeah, it was possibly a CIA spy cult, but yeah. you know, anything can happen in your twenties. Yeah. It kind of doesn't count. And I I kind of get the feeling that Petty when the the media interest started to fade as the case gets dropped, that's when he got most interested in spreading disinformation. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read from Cohen here again, because this is really fucked up. A memo attributed to M.D. Petty delivered to the Tallahassee Democrat, that's a newspaper, said Mm -hmm. that he was resigning as leader of the Finders, a position he said he didn't know he held. I thought I was just a consultant on wit and humor, the memo said. If I ever was the leader, I hereby resign to devote myself full time to Zen walking. The Finders also started publishing a newsletter, The Daily Finder, in which they announced that they were all moving to Tallahassee. The Finders are always looking for signs and symbols, they wrote. Since February 4th, Florida has been sending signals that they want to keep some finders members so now the rest are coming another issue of the daily finder come to tallahassee invited friends to come join the drama and featured the song old tallahassee well i came to tallahassee in a van so full of glee they put me in the jailhouse with the chain up on my knee so they're like writing songs about again the children of their members being held by the state like they're putting out these like fake newspapers. They're trying to get people to like move to Tallahassee to like fuck with the squares. It's mm-hmm. all very irresponsible. I'm um, sorry. I just am like trying to like you were you were singing. Yeah. 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 What? Why? I because li- that's, no, no, that's, no. You don't get the full co- effect otherwise, Jamie. I, I like I liked it. I felt like Robert I, has I was a really there. good singing voice. Thank you. Thank you. It was beautiful. Thank you. 
I thought it was beautiful. So as a coda, again, I do want to add something. It's not impossible that children were abused. Again, mm-hmm. there's no evidence of like sexual abuse, but like the neglect that was evident here, we might fairly call abuse. And that's not uncommon yeah. in cults. I, I do. I'm not saying no children were hurt. Like definitely like what Petty's doing there. These sending out fake newsletters, trying to keep this shit in the news by like spreading doubt after the case gets dismissed. You could argue mm-hmm. that's abusive to these kids who it Absolutely. harms them, slows down their ability to like rejoin a normal life. That's bad. Um, yeah, I mean, and even, yeah. yeah, you know, being guilty of neglect, that's absolutely abuse. And, and just like putting the children in that situation in the, in the first place where they have to, you know, defend themselves against all this stuff. Like it's, it's just, it is abusive. It's just, yeah, pot, but maybe not the kind of abuse that people yeah. or, or often go to prison for. Unfortunately, one of the yeah, one of the more fucked up things that comes out in this John Cohen article after the case gets dropped is that you know how like when they initially get pulled over by the cops, the like two male adult cult members are like, "We're taking these children to Mexico to put them in a genius school. We're making a Harvard for babies." Well, yeah, they didn't. It turns out they didn't come up with that dipshit excuse on the fly. They were instructed to say that by Petty if they were approached by the police, which like he... <sighs> you have to know that's going to make the police suspicious. That's not going to calm down an investigation, like. You have like yeah. six kids you're not related to in a van and are like, we're taking them into Mexico. That's going to get you all arrested. I don't. I don't understand. I Yeah. The do we I mean, it's also like, do we believe that he, that is the it, it, it is the most made up sounding like I have to make something up on the fly thing in the world. I don't under like everyone. Everyone here is like making, except for the mothers, baffling decisions it's, because it's nonsense. I feel like there has to be, a, but again, it's like I can't even say a sentence about this without sounding conspiratorial. I'm like, I feel yeah. like there's something we're missing. There some may be missing piece of information. <laughs> I cannot make sense of it. It's really weird. What I do think, so it, it, what it seems like happens is after the case gets dismissed, it comes out through like reporting and, and interviews with Petty that. A lot of this was his fault because he coached his guys to give these evasive, weird answers. And he also coached everybody to respond in a really weird and irresponsible way during the court case. And so all of these women with kids take their children and leave the cult. And this Mm -hmm. kind of destroys the cult. Whatever Mm -hmm. else was going on, the, the goal of the finders, according to internal members, focused heavily around these kids. They were trying to like raise better people in this enlightened way. And all of these businesses that they were running and using to accumulate money, the the idea was that it would be given to these kids. That would be their inheritance for the next generation of the cult. So when all these moms leave, it kind of fractures not just the cult, but their identity and their understanding about like what the future is going to be. This, mm-hmm. it kind of, some will argue this kind of breaks petty, right? That like, mm-hmm. Now there's no future to this cult. It's just him and the last hangers on who couldn't break free from him playing games with no purpose. Like there's not any sort of attitude that they're building anything that they're like raising up a new generation. They have nothing now except for continuing to play weird games. And it gets increasingly kind of sad uh, after this point, which is a bummer. So, yeah, yeah, Petty you know, claims in the wake of the case that the finders have disbanded, but that is not true. They continue. Who's left? Like, what are their numbers like? About at this a point? dozen, somewhere between 10 and 20 people, right? That, Usually you hear about a dozen. I'm not getting out of bed for a cult f- with no. less than 40 people. And it, the, all the guys left, I think, are pretty much all men, right? Most of the women leave at this point, which does say something, again, to like this being a lower control yeah, type of cult. Never than a most. good sign. The, well, yeah. It's a good sign that the women felt like, yeah, we can bounce and nothing bad's going to happen to us. Like they had agency, right? Right. And part of why a lot of shit about the cult crumbles is these women were largely running things for Petty. And then mm-hmm. they leave and it's him and these guys. And most of the guys are kind of drips. Like they're 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 just like weirdos who want to play spy games. Yeah. And so it's just kind of them now. Um, so after the kids leave and there's no one to hand over inheritance of the businesses and property to, Petty changes the way their finance system works, right? Previously, a- according to Terrell, 
when you joined, you gave all your money to the cult, but it was like put in what they called the invisible bank. And and Tarot was like, if you wanted to take your money out, you could. We people did it all the time. They weren't stealing from you. And in fact, like cult finances were pretty healthy. Like we ran businesses that were successful. It was like you could trust that you would get your money back. After the these women take all their kids with them, Petty changes the finance system to basically a tontine where he's like, no one can withdraw their money. All of the money in businesses will go to the last one of us alive, which is oh a sketchy way to, to run things, right? That's, um, is it weird that that's, that's my first time hearing that one? I feel like I've heard it. That's, I haven't heard that one before. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. And this is, this is what finally convinces Toby Terrell to leave, right? Like this is why he <laughs> actually leaves the cult and he winds up suing Petty um, because okay. he's like, he stole all of our money. <laughs> right. I was fine with him until he started fucking with my money. So in 1996, after the hubbub around child trafficking and the court case against the finders had mostly subsided, a journalist named Eddie Dean traveled down to Florida to meet with Terrell and write an article for the Washington City paper. Despite mm-hmm. the fact that he was actively involved in suing Petty, Terrell was like really positive about his former cult leader. Like he doesn't have a negative look towards him. He says, quote, I think if you look at the history of utopian movements in America, the finders have a legitimate place because of the experimentation that went on. It was a good experiment. A lot of people learned from it and I wouldn't trade it for anything. It lasted for 20 years while I was there and I wouldn't call it a failure, he says, adding, I still think Petty is a man of great insight and the world would do well to listen to his ideas. Now, here's the thing. I, I've, I've read everything about this cult. I don't know what his ideas are. I don't, I don't know, know what his insights are. They seem like they were LARPing. What was the goal? I lo- I That is like a classic in the genre of like, yeah. say what you will about their methods. He had some good ideas. And you're like, but did he? Yeah. That's what the was thi- the idea? At, at least with like L. Ron Hubbard, right? When people are like, look, the cult's bad, but you know, his ideas were really good. At least I, I don't agree with them. His ideas were dog shit, but he yeah. had ideas, right? There's books full of his there theories. Was something to latch on to. As, I still am struggling. Struggling with like outside of like, yeah, I want to I like spy movies and I could do that. Like, what are you latching on to? Yeah, there's like he's suing him. Like what? (laughs) I don't get it. Yeah, it's like I think the thing they're talking about is his idea that like, you know, life should be a game and you should always be learning. But like he picked a weird way to learn. Um, what, and, and also, like, what did we learn? Yeah, what did you learn? Don't <sighs> play games with the FBI when your kids are taken into custody on suspicion of being molested as part of a devil conspiracy. I feel well, like I knew that. Most people know that. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty intuitive. I don't yeah. think that's adding very much. That's yeah. like, again, you're just like, what's the missing piece of information here? Why would someone say that? It doesn't. Yeah. I don't know. We but what I feel well, Robert. I feel no closer. I feel no, no closer to understanding no. any of this. This this is a little bit of a fucking cipher here. Yeah. Um, but what is interesting to me is that like even Paula Erico, who again leaves the cult and takes her kid with her because of how badly Petty handles this whole case, won't speak badly about him afterwards. Quote. Though she left the finders more than a year ago, it's still we this and we that. She also speaks lovingly, no adoringly, of Petty. The rest of us are just dead between the ears compared to him, she says. Erico also provides some of our best insight into why Petty's cult functioned the way it's did, with all its weird information gathering missions and spy games. And this is John Cohen writing. But why compile a giant who's who, I ask? It's a mystery why things are of interest to Petty, but he's not able to call complete games if he doesn't have complete information. You don't know what game Petty has in mind to call tomorrow. He already has it in mind. He's got next year's game in mind, based on the information you're bringing him right now. And again, what the fuck does that mean? Like, (laughs) is that all, like, uh, is that when you people talk about, like, how he's such a genius, he's got, is he just a good DM? Like, were you all playing that's a big game I, of Dungeons and Dragons and he was just really good at it? And that's why like, you think he's a genius? The only thing I can really, it's like the only thing it seems like he has successfully and permanently deluded his followers into thinking is that he is ultimately a pretty smart guy. Yeah. Like everything else, they seem like they can kind of take or leave. It's such a weird fucking story. But they cannot let story. go of the concept that like, <laughs> yeah. but, but he wasn't. 
you know, he was, dumb. I, I've seen no evidence. He's certainly not dumb, but I don't see any evidence that he's smart in part because he does some really dumb shit that loses him most of his cult. And it was right. really basic dumb shit. And they're um, not, I, I also don't, I mean, unless, again, unless there's like a missing piece of information, it doesn't seem like people are saying this because they're scared of him. It, no. it just seems to be an honestly held assessment, which I just don't. Well, and that's, well, that's based part of what's, on what you do get those police reports where they talk to 20 different members who were like, they harassed my family. You know, they harassed me. Maybe they burned a house down. But then you get Paula, who tells a journalist, the best thing for me is that I lived and worked with my best friends for eight years. It's hard to have that. And in a situation where everyone is committed to working it out, if you've ever had that one-on-one -on -one relationship with another person where there's that long-term level of commitment, I had that with 20 people. And she is, again, saying that after the cult gets her child taken away from her for six weeks. So, like... I don't know. She's talking it's like so she's weird. like a cast member of Cheers. And it's yes, like, yes. it's so weird. <laughs> we had a tough time now and again when Kelsey Grammer would get too drunk, but I wouldn't change it for anything. Right. Like, but ultimately, yeah. we were all good friends and I yeah. respect like and I will come back for the reunion. Very mm -hmm. fucking weird. It is very fucking weird. Um, and yeah, it's 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 all peculiar. So. Petty is a smart guy. Uh, he tended to avoid, again, I think his smartness is exaggerated, but he does sort of like, he's got, he's good at branding because even these, um, branding's not the wrong word. He's good at manipulating information because mm -hmm. these two good articles on him that come out after the court case, the one by John Cohen and the one by Eddie Dean, they both give a lot of really interesting context. They talk to a lot of former members, but Petty comes off as totally innocuous in them, right? As like mm -hmm. misunderstood and maybe he had some like bad judgment here and there, but there was nothing evil or abusive about him. And it's kind of silly to even call him a cult leader. Now that said, there are some hints in these and other articles that he was more abusive and cruel than he let on to being, right? That like hidden right. beneath the surface was evidence of the kind of behavior the police were reporting on when they talked to former members. Mm -hmm. Um, Here's Eddie Dean talking about what happened when he interviewed Marion Petty after having talked to Toby Terrell. So he he goes to talk to Terrell, who lives elsewhere in Virginia. And uh, Terrell is like, yeah, I'm suing him because he took my money, but I think he's a nice guy. And then when he meets up with Petty finally in, in a whatever, in, in another part of Virginia, he tells Petty, hey, I met with Terrell. And here's what happens. Toby used to be quite a character, Petty says warmly. He used to have a handlebar mustache and sing song songs for the group and all kinds of things. Then he added <laughs> soberly, Toby had a great time with us until that this woman told him that he was Toto and that I was the Wizard of Oz and they were going to expose the wizard. I tell him I had already interviewed Terrell and was impressed with his admiration for the former game caller despite their conflict. There's dead silence. Both men hunch forward in the chairs. You saw Toby, asks Petty, his face twisted with concern. Where was he? I promised that I, uh, I said that I promised I wouldn't tell, uh, I say that I promised Terrell I wouldn't tell anybody where we met, except to say it was somewhere in Virginia. He's up around here, demands Petty. Where is he? It's clear that Petty feels I owe him at least as much after all he's told me. And the journalist doesn't tell him where Petty is, but like, that's potentially, there, there's some unsettling stuff in there. For one thing, yeah. Toby leaves the cult with a woman who had been in the cult who wanted to leave because of all the shit that Petty did during the arrests, right? Mm -hmm. Petty is like blaming this woman for corrupting Toby's mind. Yeah, and you, turning re you read her that against him. quote and you went, yeah. this woman. And I was like, this yeah. This woman. Yeah, you're, you're like, like well, job. I've heard this. Uh, and also, I've heard this refrain before. Jamie and I were like, oh, triggering. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that we've one. got a lot of, we've got <laughs> some members who leave and it's fine. But like, as soon as Petty finds out that Terrell's, and he's like, where is he? Where is he? We're trying to figure out his, and like, maybe mm. for a really bad reason. Right. These guys maybe. are. In, yeah, maybe that is potentially some evidence that, yeah, this is a much worse person than a lot of these journalists wind up interpreting him as. Um, I'm also yeah. just like, again, with the handlebar mustache. Oh, yeah. That seems to have been a thing. I'm sure Petty that, made them is, do that. <laughs> yeah. that. I mean, I honestly I would hope so. I would mm -hmm. hope so. But again, that that is Yeah, the fucking Hercule Poirot looking asses. Yeah. <laughs> fucking well, whatever bullshit. it is that made this guy, you know, e even smart passing and possibly mm -hmm. diabolical was clearly not picked up on, you know, intentionally or not by at least, you know, three 
federally funded agencies. So that's yeah. fun. Yeah. It is fun. You know what's even more fun, Jamie? No. The products and services that this podcast is supported by. You're damn right. And we're back. We're back to conclude the story of the finders. So I just mainlined whatever it was that was advertised, yeah. especially sure. if it would kill me. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, most of it will. That's the one promise we make about our sponsors. <laughs> That's They'll the fucking Evans kill guarantee. you. Yeah. So whatever you can say about the finders and how evil they were or weren't or how evil Petty was or wasn't, after, you know, the early 90s, they seem to have like been pretty benign. Most of what I can verify they did was fuck with normies in Culpeper in like a mile way, right? They're they're in Culpeper, Virginia, and they're just kind of like trying to make people suspicious of them, but not really doing anything sketchy. Cult finances were good enough that they purchased an abandoned movie theater in the center of town. And, you know, it's oh. got a marquee on the front of it, right? Where you like put the names of the movies. And every day or so, one of Petty's members would change the marquee to read something cryptic. And they would always do it at like night when no one was up. So no, no one ever saw it get changed. You just wake up and there'd be something weird written on it. That happened at a bagel store near where I lived in Maine. Oh, yeah? What, what, what kind of cryptic shit? Here, let me let me look it up. I would take right. pictures of it every so often. I will uh, read you. Yeah, no, you hit me with yours. I'll hit you with yeah, mine. Yeah, so one day it read school for actors and not spelled the way actors is spelled, spelled A-K-T-E-R-S. No idea what that means. The okay. next day it would read Spycraft, a great game. And then the next free money. And then the next <laughs> ataraxia. Uh, ataraxia? Ataraxia, yeah. What is that? I think it's an inability to feel fear. Oh, I thought that they were misspelling the eating disorder. Yeah, yeah, it's imperturbability. Well, it means that like Yeah, yeah, you can't you can't be flustered or or frightened basically. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, sure, I don't know. Here's what Mr. It's Bagel weird. in it's Portland. A, it's a state of serene uh calmness. Yeah. Okay. Imperturbability. <laughs> I've got here's here's one from Mr. Bagel. Uh, unconditional love for us and all is heaven here and now. And then underneath it says <laughs> new Red Bull menu. Um, <laughs> there's another uh, joy is possible. Our constructs keep us from attaining it. And then again, below new Red Bull menu. <laughs> so I think yeah. at the bagel shop, they were proud. The employees were probably just like drinking 40 Red Bulls and yeah. then deciding what they were to just put on hallucinating the market. from too much taurine. Heaven is here yeah. And now. <laughs> yeah. And like none of that makes much, but it's all like shit that's going to make people in a small town in Virginia in the late 90s suspicious. Like, sure. Yeah. You know, it, it, it. and I think they're just doing it to have people talk about them. Right. Small yeah. town. I People are the most paranoid humans who have ever existed. Um, so it's it's not surprising that this caused consternation. Eddie Dean would later write, quote, In appearance, the finders, mostly middle-aged men, always in dark suits, wouldn't be out of place managing a local funeral home. But the behavior of the handful of adherents has people wondering whether they arrived by flying saucer. Townspeople say the finders constantly walk the streets, following people home and taking extensive notes and pictures. They often appear at local council meetings, never saying a word, but simply observing the scene. At other times, they plunder the visitor center of brochures, maps, and local travel guides, and they haunt the courthouse, scouring land deeds to find out who owns local real estate. Naturally, though, rumors fly. Did you hear what the finders are doing at the old theater? They're planning a stage production of Paradise Lost with an all-nude cast. Or was it a gay burlesque version of Dante's Divine Comedy, where the oh. finders gathered for some ritual in the back lot, or were they simply taking trash to the dumpster? People have seen glowing lights in the windows of the finders group house at the edge of home, along with visitors coming and going at odd hours. The lawn is mowed in a peculiar circular pattern. That's the place where they sacrifice pot-bellied pigs. So oh. all of this is nonsense. These are just like I, like rumors that are spreading in town because Petty wants that. It's just viral marketing for bad community theater. Yeah. And yes. you should yes. go to jail yes. for doing that. Yes. Yeah. 
that's all they're doing is he's like, how weird can we be to create the maximum number of cons- yeah, mow the lawn weird, put some marquees up on the thing, turn lights on at weird hours of the night, you know, follow people home at a distance, taking notes visibly in a notepad. Like mm-hmm. they're just fucking with the normies, which I <laughs> normally I, I actually in this case, I do respect it. Like, it's not cool when you're like endangering children, but this is a fun thing to do the rest of the time. I, I don't know. I mean, it like it's it's certainly annoying, but it's like improv everywhere annoying. Mm -hmm. at that point where you're like yeah Yeah. should they be you know executed yes for but but we can't we have not yet succeeded to you know be able to execute improvisers no no when i when i win the presidency jamie that's the first federal law like as an executive order i'm going to mandate Mm -hmm. the death penalty for uh for improv people yeah it's illegal ev- for anything else it, but but improv and, and uh, improv it yeah. can be on site and it, it can, yeah everyone <laughs> it, we, we, i'm deputizing the entire country to carry out and this is actually i think what can heal the left right divide in this country we can get we can get Beautiful. communists and and fascists all on board with taking out the fucking improv people finally a true bipartisan mm-hmm. yeah. issue <laughs> yeah aoc and ted cruz holding hands and and burning down an improv shop <laughs> <laughs> finally this country can heal mm-hmm. now Eddie Dean, that journalist, comes to town looking for Petty. And it becomes very, like, he's a journalist. He's not trying to hide what he's doing. He, like, goes around to places where the finders go and is like, does anyone know Marion Petty? I'd like to interview him. So they become aware that he's looking for him. And they change their theater marquee to, to, like, deliver a message to him. They change it to John 832, which is a, a portion of the Bible that reads, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Now, mm-hmm. That may not seem like it specifically has anything to do with, like, conspiracies or this journalist, but that particular quote from the Bible is engraved in the lobby of the headquarters of the CIA, right? It was the favorite Uh, motto of former CIA chief William Colby, who had disappeared a week before in an accident in the Chesapeake Bay. So, like, again, uh, there's conspiracy theories about them and the CIA, and they put up this message when a journalist comes into town knowing exactly what it would insinuate, right? That's not an accident. They're not dumb. They understand what they're doing here. This was a deliberate attempt to reinforce the conspiracy theory. But they also know it. There two things can be true here. Yes, two things can be true here. (laughs) This was like that. He again. I think he gets addicted to the attention and to people believing that he's part of something nefarious and insidious. Yeah, this really. I mean, just like the more we we talk this through, it's like this could have all been sort of you know relieved by a theater degree, like a yeah. the, a, a good state funded theater program could yeah. have really nipped this all in the bud. If World of Warcraft had been out at the same time, I don't think this yeah. cult gets off the ground. I think Petty is a pretty successful guild leader, um, but I don't think this cult gets off the ground. No. So, Petty eventually does meet with Eddie Dean and you know he he gives an interview uh there's not a lot in the interview it's mostly Mary and Petty being like playing at the kindly wise guru right he's making these kind of like statements that sort of like he he's trying to play himself off as like this zen buddhist figure right almost exhausting where he's this, Ex- he's this, this humble man seeker is- yeah. If nothing else, fucking exhausting. Yeah. He's like, you could call me a cult leader, but I see myself as a student and all of the members of the group are my teachers and the world is my teacher. And I'm just always learning. That's why I started all this is I I just love learning. Right. Um, mm. And most of it's shit like that. But there are these points of ugliness that shine through the mask he builds for himself, including this point at which Eddie Dean asks him about the lawsuit with Toby Terrell and several other former members, where Petty says, the only conflict I've ever had in my life are with these ungrateful wretches that are suing me now. They were dope fiends and emotionally disturbed people, and they got cured in my mental hospital and they left. Now they come back and want to take the hospital. Which, first off. You had another conflict in your life. A bunch of the kids in your cult got arrested and t- or got taken to custody. Yeah, interesting. Like, that's uh, you no got longer... raided by the feds. <laughs> like that's not a conflict. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't talk about that anymore. Yeah, it's also like it's a fucked up thing to be like, yeah, these guys who are suing me, they're all dope fiends. You know, I cured them, so I should get to keep their money. Um, that's kind of evil, right? That's a pretty fucked up thing to say. I would um, say I would say evil. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. 
Marion Petty continued to remain comfortable, and he spent the bulk of his remaining years in Culpeper, fucking with people and living with his last dozen or so followers. An internal cult document in 1990, written in the form of a CIA dossier, describes him this way. Radiates a very casual but completely confident sense of self, a sort of Qaddafi without the ego. Makes jokes about Oof. switching roles, yet always carries himself like an active duty officer. Does not fidget. When seated in car or domicile, assumes a position and holds it. No fast movements. Steady, modulated voice, not bass. Sometimes speaks in a clenched teeth fashion, yet other times as a hint of a Virginia drawl. Maintains that he likes young pussy more than old pussy. Moreover, upon questioning, stated that twice a week since the age of 13 or so, has been the optimum amount for me. Farts a lot. Eccentric in urinary <laughs> habits. Walks 10 to 20 miles a day and has done so for years. Reports that the secret of his health and happiness is having constantly associated only with people he likes and who like him. So, Marion Petty. Yeah, kind of like a real uncle, uncle-like description you just yeah, gave there. Yeah. That's like forty percent like, of our nation's uncles. He uh, sounds like a, by that description. Yeah. He's a creepy old man from the seventies. Is he yeah. a Satanist trafficking children? I don't think so. Is he a creepy old man from the seventies? For sure. <laughs> He's definitely a creepy old man. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is local theater nonsense mm -hmm. and I don't abide by it. And I, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So he died in 2003, having lived exactly the life he meant to live for better and for worse. Um, yeah. And his legacy today continues on in the form of countless YouTube videos and podcasts theorizing that this is all the basis of the Jeffrey Epstein sex trafficking crimes or Pizzagate or all sorts of stuff. And yeah. Or it's us being like, who's to say? Being like, what the fuck hours. was happening here? Yeah. <laughs> We're not sure. Yeah. And I still don't have a good answer for you folks, but at least it was a long one. <laughs> <laughs> At least it took us a long time to yeah. not totally be sure. I truly, yeah, I, I, I was not, you know, familiar with the story uh, before this before this saga and i feel no closer i do yeah. it does still feel like there's some piece of information missing uh and that this like it, it also just the timing of this too is so unfortunately aligned with the satanic panic where it's just like anything that got sucked up into that vortex it there's an element of either not true or we'll never know the degree of truth because of how just like nonsense brain that period was yeah yeah speaking of nonsense jamie <laughs> yeah it's nonsense that you had anything to do with those murders in grand rapids uh it's the allegations i will say are nonsense mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. allegations yeah. are nonsense there's no yeah. sense to them and, i have uh, and on, an alibi on, on that note you have a new book coming out called if i did it the Grand right. Rapids, Michigan story. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, can you believe it's self-published? Yeah. No one can publish it. <laughs> yeah, it is self-published, but oddly enough, you do have a a jacket quote by Norman Mailer, which is which is impressive. That's a real get. Salman Rushdie too. So you know, yeah. some big names coming out swinging for this one. I got some friends in high places, and mm -hmm. the the pull quotes are do not reflect well on me but they did send them in so we, we put them on the on the jacket yeah it's a self-published book so it's kind of uh, yeah. the the surface yeah. of the book is a little mm -hmm. sticky yeah very but... sticky <laughs> and, and the salman rushdie quote just says can you believe i'm the one who got stabbed <laughs> that's maybe a mean joke for salman <laughs> that <laughs> that's out of pocket that's, that's out, out of, of pocket. pocket you're right you're right I apologize. I That's don't. It's okay. There, mm -hmm. please, yeah, uh, check check out uh, check out that book. I feel like that one's gonna really make a splash. Uh huh. Uh, I think it's it's gonna be it's gonna be huge. Mm -hmm. I also I took the cue from Prince Harry. I also talk about a lot of disgusting things at length. Oh, good. Well. Let's, you got anything else to plug, Jamie? Oh, is it time? Okay, sorry. You yes, can also yes, the uh, over. Buy, buy my book that isn't sticky, uh, at least not before you eat a hot dog while you're holding Whoa, it. It's called Whoa, I dog. did not know where you were going there. Yeah, neither did <laughs> I. I thought we, might have to, thought we might have to use the five-second delay there, Sophie. It's not, 
look, I I can say with confidence that if you come on my book, it mm-hmm. will get sticky. There's no way around it. I don't think the technology exists to prevent it. No. Nope. Uh, but if you come on, you can't come on a podcast, and that's a great way mm-hmm. to. Uh, I have a new podcast coming out. Wow. Great. March you're, you're nailing this, Jamie. <laughs> about main characters of the internet. Uh, it's a digital thing, so you won't be able to come on it. So maybe you could get the We're, book and listen to the podcast because wow. I can't, you know, think about that. What a choice. And I feel confident about that plug. Yeah. Great. Well, everybody, until next time. Uh, Send in suggestions for who we should accuse of murder next. Please not me anymore. Goodbye. Behind the Bastards is a production of Cool Zone Media. For more from Cool Zone Media, visit our website, coolzonemedia.com. Or check us out on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.